It's Monday, September 24th. I'm Wayne Moore. This is Evening Update. At the top of the news, a high-profile murder case involving a former, former Vernon man linked to the death of a Japanese exchange student got off to a graphic start Monday. Natsumi Kagawa was found dead on the grounds of the Gabriola House mansion in Vancouver September 28th of 2016, two weeks after she was reported missing. The 30-year-old had just moved to Vancouver to study English. Prosecutors told court her naked body was discovered inside a black suitcase. 51-year-old William Victor Schneider was arrested at a homeless camp in Polson Park in Vernon just hours after the body was discovered. A bail hearing has been set for a man charged with second-degree murder in connection with the death of a woman found inside a West Kelowna hotel. 69-year-old Taewon Dan Zhu was arrested near the Best Western Hotel on July 22nd after police discovered a dead woman inside the hotel. The Lower Mainland man was reportedly found by a police dog hiding inside a dumpster next to Tim Hortons. A Kelowna man accused of killing his wife and two young daughters has had his case put over. Jacob Foreman was stoic as he briefly appeared via video in Supreme Court. The 34-year-old worked as a supervisor at a local HVAC company and was arrested at his home on December 19th of 2017. The bodies of Foreman's wife, Clara, and two children were found inside their home on Bolotsky Court. Much needed repairs to the town of Oliver's irrigation canal remain mired in bureaucracy, all while billions of dollars in infrastructure grants are handed out across the, pro across the country by the federal government. The nearly 100-year-old Oliver Canal brings water to 1,400 hectares of farmland along its 17.4-kilometer route between Vaso Lake and Hester Creek. In 2016, a rockfall damaged the canal at Gallagher Lake, and since then, the municipality has been working to secure funding to reroute the canal. A Penticton motel manager has been fined $750 following a fight between he and a group of partying guests he was trying to evict. Carlo Pontus, age 44, pleaded guilty in court Monday to one count of obstructing a police officer in a plea deal that saw related assault charges dropped. BC Liberal leader Andrew Wilkinson is challenging Premier John Horgan to a public debate on proportional representation. In a Facebook video, Wilkinson said the NDP has broken its promise to give BC voters a simple yes or no choice, stacking the deck with a complicated, confusing referendum. The Liberals oppose the change as presented in a mail-in referendum that will be held October 30th to November 30th. Roughly 20 gallons of biodiesel spilled onto 31st Street next to City Hall in Vernon Monday afternoon. A steamroller drove over a parking meter, dislodging something underneath, resulting in the spill. Vernon Fire Rescue was called and a hazmat team contained the mess before much of the spill could spread. The owner of a pawn shop in which a family photo was mysteriously found has said that he would love to see the picture returned to its family. Darren Hafter of Quick and Easy Pawn Brokers in Ben Ticton saw the story on Castanet on Monday morning about a mother in Ontario who saw the humour when she was told a picture of her son was hanging in a pawn shop in Ben Ticton with a price tag of $29. Hafter said he would love to get the picture back to its rightful owner, either the mother or the son. Big White Ski Resort is getting some big press in advance of the upcoming ski season. Ski Magazine, the world's largest selling ski magazine with more than one and a half million readers, put Big White on the cover of its latest issue, which takes a look at North America's best resorts. The cover shot of Todd Avison skiing down the slopes was taken by Jeff Holman. Okanagan weather will have a return to sunshine for the balance of the week throughout the valley with lows expected in the mid single digits, highs 19 to 21. Coming up tonight and tomorrow, a West Kelowna man has changed his plea and a Kelowna eyesore is coming down. For details on these and the rest of the day's news, keep it here at castanet.net. For Castanet News, I'm Wayne Moore.